our next indeterminate form here is one to the infinity. So one to the infinity um, is indeterminate and I got somebody else coming in here now. Um, one to the infinity is an indeterminate form and it requires us to deal with it in a somewhat different manner. So what we're going to use is this idea that I've got written up here, is we're going to basically pull that infinity out of the exponent by using a logarithm. So if we were to try to find the limit as x went to infinity of the natural log, of this function, so the natural log of some function, and we were able to find a limit for that, right? We get some value. Well, then that should tell us that our original limit, right, this one without the natural log in front of it, should be the same as e to this power of L that we found doing the different limit, the limit of the logarithm, right? Because e to the natural log of a function is just that function. So this limit, the limit as x approaches a of e to the natural log of f of x should be equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x. And so once we find this one, all we have to do is put it as a power of e. We have to exponentiate it. And that should give us our limit of our original function. Does that make sense? Or no. Kind of. Kind of. Okay. I mean, we're we're familiar with the fact that e to the ln of some function is equal to that function, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this being true, if I look for the limit as x approaches a of f of x, well, instead of doing f of x, I could do, since this is, this limit is our one to the infinity, it's our indeterminate limit that we can't find out. So what we do instead is we say, all right, let's find the limit as x approaches a of the natural log of f of x. And once we find this limit, right, this limit, if I put in e to that power of that limit, it should be equal to the limit of our original function, just because of the fact that e to the natural log of something just cancels out the e in the natural log. Does that help or no? Yeah. OK. All right, so let's give this a try. So first off, what should we do? We should take the infinity and plug it in and see what we get. So if I take the infinity and plug it in, one plus one over infinity is one plus zero, right? So this becomes one to the infinity. So in order to find this limit, we are instead going to look at the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of one plus one over x to the x. And so what does that allow us to do? Move the x to the front? Yeah, it should just let us take that x out in front of the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. Everybody agree with that? I hope. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. So now that we've got that, let's plug in infinity. What do we get? Infinity times zero. We get infinity times zero, which is a problem, right? because that's our indeterminate form, one of our indeterminate forms from yesterday. True? True. So how do we deal with it?
natural log of one plus one over x over one over x. Okay, so let's rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of one plus one over x over one over x, which is now what? Now this is zero over zero. Everybody agree with that? Yes. Uh, good, which is a much better indeterminate form for us, right? Because what can we do with that indeterminate form? We can L'Hopital. use L'Hopital's rule. So we will, using L'Hopital's rule, which you'll remember to write out, turn this into the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. So derivative of natural log of u is 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. And then times the derivative of 1 plus 1 over x, which is what? Negative 1 over x squared. Wonderful. All divided by the derivative of 1 over x, which we just said is negative 1 over x squared. Conveniently, these negative 1 over x squareds will cancel out. And we end up with the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over 1 plus 1 over x, which is what? And just one, right? And so that's our answer? Yes. No, that's not our answer. What? Say that again. I, I yelled over you because I think it was no one was yelling. Don't you have to do e to the one? Exactly. So this is the limit of the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x to the x. But we want the limit of 1 plus 1 over x to the x. So we'll say, so this limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the x is equal to e to the first power or just e. Okay. Um, so we have to remember to go back in and exponentiate the answer that we got when we took the natural log. Good or no? This one becomes that power there. Everybody's good with that, right? Good. All right. Let's look at another indeterminate form. Zero to the zero. So zero to the zero is also indeterminate. And that's exactly what we've got here. If we're looking at the limit as x approaches zero from the right of x to the x, right? And this one should be, you know, should be pretty obvious why this is indeterminate, right? Zero to any power is always zero, but anything to the power of zero is always one. And so now we've got a little bit of a contradiction there between those two things, right? Zero to the zero could be zero, one, or something else. Um, so let's take a look then. Um, what do you think we should do with this one? Any ideas? I feel like it's a logarithm. It's you feel point. like it's a logarithm. Yes. Your, your feeling is right. It's a logarithm. We're just going to use the same method that we used for the last one. So we are going to, since this is zero, I can't write on this laptop today. Zero to the zero. Then we will look at the limit as x approaches zero from the right of the natural log of x to the x, which should give us the limit as x approaches zero from the right of x ln x, which is what?
zero times what the limit is, or what's the natural log of zero from the right hand side? Negative, Negative infinity. Negative infinity. So zero times an infinity, which is indeterminate. So what do we have to do with it? We need to rewrite it so that x is on the bottom. So x is in the L bottom. So uh, ln x over one over x, which is now what? Negative infinity over over a positive infinity, which is indeterminate, right? Which means what can we use? L'Hopital's rule giving us the limit as x approaches zero from the right. What's the derivative of natural log of x? One over x. One over x. And then the derivative of one over x is negative one over x squared, as we just did, which um, we can simplify this down. This is the limit as x approaches zero from the right. This becomes negative, and then x squared over x, which is the limit as x approaches zero from the right of negative x, which is. Zero. Zero. And that's our answer? No. No. So the limit as x approaches zero from the right of x to the x is equal to e to the zero power, right, which equals one. Good or no? All right, let's look at another indeterminate form. So we have infinity to the power of zero. So another indeterminate form. And what do you think we ought to do with ones that are infinity to the zero? Same thing. That is correct. We want to do the same thing. So we will look at, well, let's first plug this in. This becomes infinity to the one over infinity. So infinity to zero. So this is that form for sure. We will look at the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of x to the one over x, which is what? The natural log of x over x. Which is the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of x times 1 over x or the natural log of x over x. Everybody good with that so far? Yeah. Or no. Yeah, everyone's good there. Okay. And so what do we get if we plug that in? Infinity over infinity. Okay, so we end up with infinity over infinity, which means we need to use L'Hopital's L'Hopital's rule. We should write that L'Hopital's rule. Limit as x approaches infinity of derivative of the natural log is one over x. Derivative of x is just one, which gives us one over infinity, which is zero. Zero. And so our answer is one. One. The limit as x approaches infinity of x to the one over x equals e to the zero, which is one. Everybody good with that? Any questions there? This might be silly, but why is infinity to the zero indeterminate? Because if infinity represents some large unattainable number, but everything to the power of zero is one. Yeah, everything to the power of zero is one. That's true, but not necessarily infinity. Because remember, this is a 
it's not just this infinity to the zero, but this it's this limit that we're talking about. So is the base of this thing getting so large so quickly that raising it to a power that is very, very small and very, very close to zero still going to make it be exceptionally large over time, or is it going to drive it down towards something that is one over time? So it, it depends on how quickly we are approaching infinity and how quickly we are approaching zero. Um, oh, because okay. on one end, you know, infinity to any power should just be getting very large, right? But some number to zero should be getting very small. So it's, there's the... All right, thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I will give you guys a minute here to try and work through this one on your own. Plug it in, make sure you see which indeterminate form it is first, and then see if you can evaluate this limit. So I'll give you two or three minutes to do this. Sound good? Cool. All right, ready to go. So when we first plugged in the zero, what did we end up with here? Infinity to the zero. Infinity to the zero. So we had to look at instead a limit as x approached to zero of one over x squared to the x natural log of that. And we pull the x out in the front, which gives us the limit as x approaches zero of x ln one over x squared. And what did that become if you plug in? zero into that, that became zero times what? Negative. Infinity. And negative infinity, technically, but yeah, which is another indeterminate form. So we wrote this as the limit as x approaches zero of, I'm guessing your natural log of one over x squared over one over x. And then took the derivatives of both the top and the bottom because this was now what, negative infinity over infinity? This was an infinity over infinity, right? And so the derivative of natural log of one over x squared is what? Negative two over x cubed over one over x squared. Okay, so we have a negative. Okay, so first off, it's one over this one over x squared, right? Which is what? X squared. X squared. And then, then we have the derivative of the one over x squared, which is negative two over x cubed. Okay, good. And then over here, we've got. What does that become? Negative one over x squared. Negative one over x squared. And so if we, hold on one second, sorry. All right, sorry about that. So if we bring that x squared up into the numerator, that becomes an x to the fourth up there. All right, so we have x to the fourth over x cubed, which is just an x, right? And then the negatives cancel, and we still have a two up there. So this is the limit as x approaches zero of two x. Is that what you guys got? Yeah. Okay, which gives you zero. And so we're looking at the limit as x approaches zero of one over x squared to the x, which should be e to the zero, which should be one. Good or no? Does it matter at all that um, that the limit is approaching zero, like from both sides and not just from the right? Um, because from the natural log when you're solving it? Well, because it, it would, but this is an x squared, so that makes this always a positive value. So we're still approaching zero from the right hand side. Oh, I see. Right. This this natural log of getting close to zero is always a positive number. So. 
So okay. if it was one over X, then what would we give as the answer for this problem? Well, for one over X, then this limit for the top part of this wouldn't technically exist. And so you would have to say that that doesn't technically exist. Um, but that won't likely happen. If you go back here a little, you can see we did, you know, we did this one where it was zero from the right. So because we were going to have this natural log of X, we had to define this as zero from the right in order to get a limit that actually works. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we won't come across problems where there's an end of, like one of these indeterminate forms where it doesn't technically exist once you apply I, the natural log to it. I, I would say that it is highly unlikely that you would. Yeah. I mean, you might get one where it doesn't exist, but it won't be because of the natural log part of it. It'll just because you end up with like five over zero or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'll give you guys another two or three minutes here to work through another one. Sound good? Great. Great. All right, ready to go. So uh, if we plug in pi over two coming from the left hand side, what's cosine of pi over two? Zero. Zero. So this is zero to the zero. <laughs> indeterminate. So we will look at the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left of the natural log of cosine x to the cosine x, which ends up giving us the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left of cosine x, natural log cosine x. Good so far? Yes. Cool. All right. So now when we plug this in, this becomes what? Zero times negative infinity. And so now you can see why this needed to be pi over two from the left, right? Because if we approach pi over two from the left hand side, those are getting closer to zero from the positive part, right? Those are positive, very small numbers getting close to zero. So this is the natural log of zero from the right, which makes it negative infinity. So this becomes that other indeterminate form. And what should we do then? Drop the cosine into the denominator. And how did you guys write that when you dropped it to the denominator? Secant. You wrote it as secant? Okay, I'll do the same then. Um, if you write it as one over cosine, that's also fine. And now, what do we have here? These are both uh, these are both infinities, right? This is a negative infinity. And let's see, as we approach pi over two from the left for secant of x, that should be going up to uh, a positive infinity, I think so. We'll now use L'Hopital's rule, taking our derivatives, giving us a limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left. And then the derivative of natural log of cosine ought to be 1 over cosine, right? Times the derivative of cosine, so negative tangent x over derivative of secant, secant x tangent x. Tangents will cancel, and what do we have? We have the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left of negative what? <clears throat> cosine x. Negative cosine x. And if I plug that in, what do we get? Equals? Zero. Zero. So the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left of cosine x the cosine x equals e to the zero, which is any issues there? No? Wait, sorry, can you quickly explain the thing about uh, um, why we had to approach pi over two from the left and why we can't approach it from the right? Yeah, so if this was pi over two from the right-hand side, um, think about, yeah, think about your, 
cosine function. That's just, you know, here's pi over two where it crosses the x-axis. If I'm approaching pi over two from the right-hand side, what can you tell me about all of the y values? Oh, they're all negative. Okay, yeah. They're all negative, right? And so then I have natural log of negatives, which doesn't work. Good? Yeah, thank you. Yep. All right, what about this one? This one's actually a nice, uh, easy one, easier one. What do we get? Natural log of what? Yeah, natural log of infinity, which is infinity over infinity. So this one's already in one of our regular forms. So this is just a regular L'Hopital rule one. How do we do this? Taking the derivative, right? Derivative of natural log x plus one is one over x plus one. And then derivative of log base two of x is what? XLN2. Mm, hopefully one over XLN2. Right. Which should give us what? A limit as X approaches infinity. If we rewrite this, we can make this XLN2 over X plus one which is infinity over infinity. And so we will then use L'Hopital's rule again. What's the derivative of X ln two? What's the derivative of x ln2? ln2? ln2, right? ln2 is just a constant. What's the derivative of x plus 1? Just 1. So we get ln2. Is that our final answer? No. It's not? I think it is. It is. I didn't take a natural log this time, right? It's just a regular L'Hopital's rule problem. So don't get all caught up in re-exponentiating things if you didn't take a natural log. All right, you guys wanna do another one? All right, do another one. I'll give you guys a minute or two to work on this one on your own. Ready? Go. One to the negative infinity. Is it negative infinity? I guess it's not. Yeah, one to the negative infinity, but still one to any infinity, right? Um, it's going to be an indeterminate. So um, let's take a natural log. So I'm going to look at the limit as x approaches one from the right of the natural log of x to the one over one minus x. Pull the one over one minus x out of the front. And you have a natural log of x inside there. And really, what form is this? This is, as we approach 1, this is 0 over 0. Um, right, because that 1 in the numerator is really insignificant. This is natural log x over 1 minus x. So we'll use L'Hopital's rule. And what's the derivative of natural log of x? It's one over x and the derivative of one over one minus x, or sorry, the derivative of just one minus x, right? Because that one minus x is in the denominator, it's just a negative one. And what do we end up with? Negative one. Negative one. And is that our final answer? No. We get e to the negative one or one over. Good or no? Feel like we got the hang of these? You guys doing all right with them? Getting them all right when you do them on your own? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, 
Last one we're going to do today and we'll be done. What is the indeterminate form here? Yeah, this is an infinity minus infinity. Really, it's a negative infinity minus a negative infinity. But really, if you distribute the minus signs to that, that's infinity minus infinity. And so how are we going to deal with this? Can't just take a natural log of it. The last time we had infinity minus infinity, we got a common denominator, but there's no, no denominators. Yeah, so good. Ryan, we're going to use log rules. So what's the log rule for this? We can convert this into a limit as x approaches 0 from the right of what? Natural log of x over sine x. Good or no? And then now this is just a simple u substitution limit. If u is equal to x over sine x, as x approaches zero from the right, what is u approach? That's a limit we just know, right? One. One. So we end up with the limit as u approaches one of the natural log of u, which is the natural log of one or zero. Good or no? Yeah, good. All right. That is all of the new indeterminate forms that we need to worry about for this class. Um, and we're not really doing anything different with L'Hopital's rule. We're just doing some other stuff to convert them into a form that we can use L'Hopital's rule with. Um, so it's not really an addition to L'Hopital's rule. It's just some workarounds to find some new limits. 